Wow, it's been a while since I've been in front of the camera. The Devil All the Time is directed by Antonio Campos and is based on the novel by Donald Ray Pollock. It stars an impressive cast, including but not limited to Tom Holland, Robert Pattinson, and Sebastian Stan. This movie tells a collection of stories that all connect to Arvin Russell, a troubled teenager living with his grandmother and stepsister in West Virginia. So now there are a lot more big movies coming out, some on streaming services and some in theaters because there are theaters reopening around the country. But I personally am not ready to go back to theater. Also, I can't even if I wanted to because the theaters in my area are not open as of yet. So I'm still talking about movies from streaming services. The Devil All the Time is a movie I was interested in. I heard the cast, that got me really excited. And then I saw the first trailer, but didn't really know what to think of it. I didn't read the book, so I had no idea what it was gonna be about. I just knew vaguely what I saw from the trailer, which looked interesting, and I was on board for whatever it was gonna be about. Now that I've seen the movie, I will say it was very crazy. This is a very dark movie. It's a little bit of a slow burn, but sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. I overall would say I still enjoyed it, and there's some really wild parts. Also, I don't want to get too much into the details here because I do think if you don't know what's about to happen in this movie, you would definitely will enjoy it a lot more. I'm not sure how close it is to the book, so I'm not sure if talking about the book would be a spoiler either. So we'll just go with the flow here, but I'm just going to give my general thoughts on pretty much what I thought of the movie. So let's get into it. So what worked? First of all, the actors did an amazing job in this movie. Robert Pattinson and Tom Holland especially killed it. For Tom Holland, this is a role I've not really seen him in before. This is a lot darker. This is a dark movie in general. And he definitely does some pretty wild stuff in the movie that you would not see Peter Parker doing. Well, not this version of Peter Parker doing. And that was pretty cool to see that he had that range. I think he did a great job with his character. Robert Pattinson was also kind of a show stealer. He plays this preacher and he completely immersed himself in this role. The voice he did, was really well done and again makes me really excited to see him as Batman. So if you're still sleeping on Robert Pattinson, wake up because this guy is a great actor. He did The Lighthouse last year and now he has this movie. I think he's absolutely killing it and I really look forward to seeing him as Batman next year. There's also great performances from Jason Clark, Bill Skarsgård, Sebastian Stan. A lot of the actors, a lot of the characters in this movie are very dark, very sinister and I think everybody did that really well which helped kind of tie together the tone of the movie, which is the next thing. I think this was a very dark movie, but it worked really well. There's some really crazy stuff that happens and it's weird because a lot of the movie feels kind of slow and then something really crazy happens and it just like jolts you like, whoa, what was that? And I think that works for a lot of it, but there are some parts where it does get kind of slow, but we'll get into that later. I also really like the storytelling here. Even though there's these different stories going on, they do all tie together because they somewhat connect to the main character, but then there's also, certain themes that kind of tie them all together. For example, a lot of these stories all touch on Christianity. And it's not that they're saying Christianity is bad. I think they're actually looking more at the people. They're looking at humanity as a whole. They're looking at the dark side of humanity, how people use things like Christianity as an excuse to do some really messed up things. I think they handle that really well. I think that's an interesting theme that kind of connects these stories in a way that you may not necessarily get just from Tom Holland's character. Now that kind of leads me into what I think may not have worked as well in this movie. Again, I had mentioned it was a slow burn to a degree, which I think works. I am not a huge fan of slow burns, but I think in certain moments I can appreciate them. And for a lot of this movie, especially the first half, I think that kind of worked. I thought the pacing was pretty good. But then around the halfway point, I think it does really slow down until something crazy happens again. In terms of Tom Holland's character, all the stories are somehow supposed to connect to him. I think some of them connected better than others. Some were very obvious connections, as you'll see with like Robert Pattinson's character, for example. But then some of them are a little more indirect, like the story with Jason Clark and his character, and then how that ties into Tom Holland's. I think the connection between Jason Clark's character and Tom Holland's character could have been done a little bit better, especially towards the end. It felt a little rushed. We didn't get as much time to really understand that connection and how it plays into the bigger picture. I mean, the connection is there, but I felt like they didn't really get enough payoff for that because a lot of this movie is seeing all these different stories happening seemingly separately, but then as the movie goes on, you start to see the connections and they start to cross paths with each other, these characters. Now, when Tom Holland's character does cross paths with Jason Clarke's character, I don't think it was as satisfying as I would have wanted it. It was kind of fast. And then there's Sebastian Stan's character, who I do think 
they did a good job of establishing him towards the beginning and he does get a little bit of a story in the middle and then towards the end there's something but again his felt like a little abrupt and that's one last thing i'll say is that i do think to some degree the ending was a little abrupt in that i don't feel like i got as much closure with certain characters again i don't want to be too specific because then that spoil the movie. I do wish there was a little more closure towards the end. I mean, there is a bit of finality to it. There is narration and that does help kind of tie everything together. And they do give you like a final line to really wrap it all up. But I do wish there was some more closure, if that makes sense. I don't know if it'll make sense. I guess you have to watch it to know what I'm talking about. But I wish there was a little more closure towards the end. And actually going back, in terms of the storytelling, I did also appreciate that there are moments where they play around with time. I feel like they jump around a lot in the timeline of the story and it does actually work. I thought it would be kind of confusing at first, but it does work. And there's interesting moments where they may cut back to something that gives context to what's happening in the present, which I think works really well. And there's a lot of historical context too. So you can kind of get an idea of what's happening or what point of time the story is in. So I think that works really well too. The verdict. I think the devil all the time is great time. This is a very dark story, but I think it works. The slow burn aspect of it is hit or miss for me. Towards the first half, I didn't mind it, but in the second half, I think some parts were a little too slow. I do wish there was a little more closure towards the end of the movie to wrap things up. Now, if you've read the book, I don't know if some of this stuff will be a surprise to you. You have to tell me, again, because I didn't read it. But at least for me, I feel like there definitely could have been a little more wrap up towards the end. But I do recommend this movie. I think it is an interesting character study of sorts. There's some really great performances here from Tom Holland and Robert Pattinson, and is definitely one to be on the lookout for because I feel like some people could be nominated for some things in this movie. Again, I don't know because the Academy is kind of weird with Netflix and streaming, so we'll see. So have you watched The Devil all the time? What did you think about it? Let me know down in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.